Hello and welcome to issue 10 of the Hobby Hammer cast. I'm joined today, as always, by Miles. It's Miles as he looks around for his microphone. Talk to me about Titchmarsh. <laughs> hey, bluntly in there. So I was just about to launch off into a story that had come up this week for everyone, at least in the UK. And if you're in the UK and don't know this one yet, it's a good one. So this is the week. And this is more important than the hobby news, that it has been found out that North Korea has been showing Alan Titchmarsh gardening documentaries and blurring out his crotch. And <laughs> he released a statement that, and bear in mind, he's like 71, 72, that he's done more for his street cred than anything he's ever done in his life, <laughs> which I think is the right way to take I mean, that news. Fair play, he was packing heat there. This is definitely going on to the hobby cast. Yes, okay, so issue 10. What do we have lined up for us today, apart from anecdotal uh, stories about North Korean viewing habits? Of Alan Tishmash, yeah. Um, of Alan Tishmash's blurred out crotch. <laughs> so Did he blur got... her out? So, okay, no, we can't do. We can't go down this rabbit hole. Yeah, what, what, hobby. Hobby. What's happened this week? We've got Horace Axelmand finally getting a model. Little Horace. Yeah. yeah. We've got Sigma ranges being discontinued. Boo. Not, not to AOS, but boo discontinuing. Boo games are occurring. Yeah. I went to an event for the... Uh, oh, you did? The Old World, just a one day event. And then we've got the Hobby Hammer monthly roundup, where we're going to round yes. up both off... Uh, both off Instagram and off Miles's Discord. Yes, we are currently engaged in a challenge. We are collecting armies. We're collecting old world themed armies or fantasy themed armies. Or attempting and to. We will be, we're attempting to, but we'll round us up at the very end. Okay, where should we start first? What's uh, let, first let's start up with Axamund, the deck, Max? Right. Let's start Axamund. With yes, okay. First impressions, first gut impressions. I like the fact that he has a shield he's not nah, he's, he's his face is really good right his face uh, is no really shield good. let's return back to that okay so uh on my instagram feed uh, there, there's been uh, a little bit of discordia about whether he should have had a shield whether he does have a shield in the law when this is like the best representation of him so what is about the shield that makes you tingle right so in the in solar war mm -hmm. they when they first enter the soul system mm -hmm. The Sons of Horus start taking over space stations and they're depicted mm. with shields. Both in ter It's a shame that we don't have Terminators with shields, but he's, we've got Axeman depicted with shield like he is in Solar War mm -hmm. um, and Mourn It All. Didn't see Mourn It All looking like this. It's very no thick and no, crossy. I, I, think, but... I, th I think his shield was in um, a short story where he gets face ripped off or he was leading like a breacher unit. Oh, so it's multiple when I, books then? Yeah, well, when I developed my... Um, before chieftains were a thing, I wanted a command squad with breacher shields to represent uh, Axeman's sort of, like, shield wall. Um, just so happened chieftains came out, which were great. Um, but whenever you've seen, like, classic depictions of Axeman, he's always had, like, that double-handed, more little bastard mm. blade. And it's when I think of Axeman, a shield doesn't immediately spring to mind, but I don't think it's anything to like, like oh God, he's never had a shield. I mean, like Alan used to say, these guys have, I mean, the, the Primarchs have probably whole battle barges dedicated to their personal equipment. I remember this question came up when Gilliman was, was released and he had the sword and the fist and not the double fist. Mm. And he, said, he, he, can, he can change if he wants. He's a Primarch. He could take a sword in one engagement. He can use fists in another, lightning claws in another. It just so happened in this depiction of him, we've chosen this. Uh, same with Axamund. Uh, seeing the shield doesn't doesn't like trigger me. In a, perhaps it should, but it, 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 it doesn't set me off anyway. Mourn it all, I agree. It, I would have liked to have seen it. Uh, okay, just in general. It's crazy that they have one of the best pieces of artwork depicting this character in the Horus Heresy. Where he's facing off in the duel against Tybalt Mar. Right, one sec, one sec. Hold that thought. Okay, go. We've got the the, the either. We've got the image up on screen, like like Max rightly says. 
why not try and drive the visual medium side of things? They were one of the best pieces of artwork in the entirety of the Horse Heresy dedicated to this character. Uh, so this is taken from the front cover of the audiobook The Either, which details Tybalt's Mars' prosecution of the Black Shields, uh, the survivors of Istvan V. But he's, you have Axman here. What, why not say, oh, we, we, you know, we've produced this image. It's a cool image. We own the IP. Hey, sculptor, do that. You know, just point at that image and say, do exactly that. Well, I want that, please. And when, yeah. when you look, when you yeah, when you when you look at the sculpt, um, I think it falls into that category again. It looks great. Nothing. I can't say anything wrong about it. But does it does it make you fall in love with this character? Does it make you fall in love with the horse heresy, like maybe some of the older sculpts did? No. Uh, and I think we. No. Yeah. I think he's one of the, it, It's very standard across it i like some of the embellishments like i like how they've taken the the filigree from the shield in the corner of the the shoulder pad from that piece of artwork that we've just been looking at um but is and it i think that's a common thing right we've seen tibbot ma we've seen um i've got the iron hands medusa yeah they are fine looking characters they have they're there are elements to them I like. I love. I absolutely love uh, Axman's uh, uh, face, the way yeah. they sculpted, and I I really love his helmet. Like I, I can't wait to get that helmet for my Black Legion Lord in 40k. It's such a good. There are elements to it, like the filigree, the detailing on the chest, which it looks like the the artwork. But it feels. Oh, I don't know. Can you bring me side by side of Varen? please uh side by side right so we've got the side by side up now well the side by side and we can see they're very similar in pose to the point where it makes you question whether they have i don't know like a basic dolly like a basic frame armature that they then sculpt stuff on top of mm -hmm. i know nothing about the, the who sculpted this i know nothing about the pros and we've talked about this before People who work for Games Workshop are very dedicated, passionate people. But when you see things like this, there's like a disconnect between you and the company, right? You, I've, I've seen this before. It has that uncanny valley effect. Where, where have I seen this before? It's because they're using the same assets, like the Mark III and Mark uh, VI troopers, you know, the guy with the good yeah, pistol yeah. control, and they flip it around in, in Cheetu box, uh, and they just mirror things. <sighs> I... So it, 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 they look very similar, right? They, they, they're the same miniature, with just different stuff sculpted on the top of them. Yeah, I don't think that can really be argued too much. It's yeah, like these and minor differences can... in the helmets in there, and yeah, it's just, I mean, stuff, I mean, but the basic, the basic pose, and when you compare it to some of the older sculpts that we got, should I bring up Pollux? Should I bring up Pollux? Pollux. Right, so we've got one of Pollock's up. I'm just on Google Images flicking through. And this is obviously a unique sculpt that is entirely done for this character. Yeah. It's one-off. It's bespoke. It's the total creation of an artist. And that's not to say that the other sculpts aren't, but this is sculpted ground up. To depict this character they didn't have to but i'm guessing it's a time issue right if, if you're able to produce three or four sculpts over the course of a month then yeah. of course you're going to to do that but this might have taken the whole month to to sculpt like this and you don't want to be one of those people like oh it was better back in my day or you know member berries when you look at this character sculpts they were a big event like who is the next character coming out what is the next event that is happening yeah. were uh, classical depictions they were, they were big characters in the law that we've only really heard like a few sentences about and they came with display bases like these huge display bases that that framed the miniature and told the story mm. of it and when we get character pieces now it is just a miniature release and that's that 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 when, when you compare the two it's, it, 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 I mean, when we got into the heresy, right, it, it's because the miniatures were just so amazing. The rule system was good. 
yeah. because it broke. It, the, the 40K was a bit of a mess at the time. It was coming to the end of its cycle. But the miniatures are so good. You have Angron, Khan, Abaddon, Loken. Bespoke, beautiful miniatures that made you fall in love with that game system. I'm not sure whether if I saw Axman now or if I saw Vera now, whether it would make me fall in love with this game system based off that miniature. And that could be a completely unfair assessment because I remember back when everything was hand sculpted <laughs> in wood. Carved into, <laughs> into the stone tablets. But... Into, into the stone tablets, yes. And it might... Perhaps you need a counterpoint to this. Perhaps you need like another voice. No, I think it may be one, I... one of the things is yes, it's it's rep it's a repeated pose at least. Now and we have said mm. previously on this very show that there's only a limited amount of certain poses you can do, and if this one just happens to portray the like sort of like staunchly walking forwards into gunfire that they wanted to portray. And they wanted to mm -hmm. say start taking the characters from the time of the siege. That mm -hmm. one's done. That one's mm -hmm. just happens to be the right pose, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the other one, it's very easy for us to look at this model in and they, and I'm just being devil's advocate more than anything here, but it's it's yeah. very easy for us to look at the model and be like, it's not a paint job that we like us two on this cast would particularly appreciate. Like yeah. just in its style, like whether it's yeah, good or bad, it's just the, the shadows, style yeah. is, is not over edge highlighting. Yeah, yeah. When again, it might be one of them things when we see it in the wild, we're like, oh, actually, this bit of it comes together, that bit of it comes together. Like mm. someone's absolutely nailed the pace, the face with underlighting, and it mm. all just falls into place. Except so for the sword, replace the sword. Yeah, replace the The variant sculpt is very good. Oh, having it in hand, the details are like this backpack you, you don't see on the picture, but it, it like great, great backpack, really good. Um, I, I'm sure we'll see like lots of cool details with this miniature. Uh, yeah, I think we just need, I think we need an advocate for these new sculpts to really come on and, and give a counterpoint to this rather than two old curmudgeons. <laughs> like, oh, it was better back in my day. I liked Warhammer 6 edition. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was the best edition ever. I don't like the magic phase now. Um, if you don't like the magic phase now, I'm not saying that you sound like that, but you do sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so that was, we... that was Aximand. That was the slightly deflating conversation on Aximand. Uh, I'll be painting <laughs> at least three of these up on commission. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can... I can well, sure, you can ingest the least of lies, right? The, the sculpt is, is good. The sculpt, the sculpt is solid. Yeah, I'm 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 hoping to to have a darn good thrash at it, and you can watch the entire painting process on the Patreon. Right, so let's go on to the Sigma. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, so Max, take us through exactly what Games Workshop did yesterday at time of recording. So on the Thursday, we had the jubilation in the Heresy community over Axmund. Yes. Um, <laughs> so the Sigma like range is essentially getting slimmed down mm. and like you described it as the squat treatment but it's, it, they're just they're just slimming down the range man there's, there's some models that have been selling or not selling seemingly completely at random that mm. they are cutting out of the ranges Stormcast Eternals being the like the I real mean, yeah. shocker of all of them because when you when you look at the sculpts, it does seem like it's mainly generation one, the small blocky versions that came out in AOS 1.0 that have been overtaken with the more, like you say, slim down, stylistic, more in proportion Stormcast Eternal style that we've been seeing. Mm. Yeah, we it's, it's just surprising that this because it's it can only have been like what is it six years something like that and that's not so the longest of time when we've got models say like in the next one which is the skaven some of those models Ooh. have been selling for 20 years plus yeah i mean we've done some sleuthing on on the range and um, we think the uh, latest scope from the stormcast eternal range that is getting squatted or receiving that kind of treatment is I think it was released in 2022. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, mailman. Yeah, one sec. Okay. Okay, so we've done a little bit of sleuthing. We think one of the releases in the Stormcast range was released in 2022, I believe. Yeah, 2022 was a just a quick Google date between them all. Yeah. Of when stuff was released. Uh, yeah, some somewhere in that range. So for a miniature to have such a short shelf life. Uh, now, mm. does this mean that the range is being discontinued and you will no longer be able to buy these miniatures, or is that they're not being supported in the rules any longer? So it's it's dependent on the model, basically. Some of them are I think they call it frontline miniatures. They're not supported in tournament or they are supported in tournaments as frontline. They've got like a, a mm. date, I believe it's like June or July of either this year or next year. Mm. Um, and it's it, it sort of like, not besides the point, but it's not the the minutiae bit that I was sort of focusing on when I was looking at it. I was like, oh, so they, that I think that's a good thing that it's not like right now, as of today, they're gone. Mm -hmm. mm. Are they then going into Legends, which is like unsupported tournament format and... So mm -hmm. if you're just playing with your mates down the club, <clears throat> you can still play with them, but mm -hmm. not. And Sigma from the outside sound, like, not sounds, but like it, it seems a tournament focused game more so than say Heresy, where like you just rock up with legend stuff and people just don't care. Yeah. So I think it's people. Yeah, I don't think agreed. people are going to have to be more wary of down the club when their mate wants to play a tournament game rather mm -hmm. than just rocking up with these. And it, it's just a bit surprising. Uh, yeah. It's just a bit surprising to me that the Sigma range... Uh, yeah, same. I mean, I, I think it's taking a lot of people aback and you're seeing a lot of people... I, I mean, one of the arguments that I've seen arise from this is uh, a loss of faith in the company, how they're able to uh, essentially wipe out recent, relatively recent releases with no real regard for existing collections. So, mm. so is this going to be a trend in the future? Are we going to see like Space Marine units? Like the, the, the I mean, we all know the first bone of going the way of the dodo. We aren't going to be, and any like classic Space Marine units are being converted into plastic and being put into the heresy. But are we going to see any further cuts in, in AOS, in, I mean, God, Old World? Like, are we going to see all the factions there? What it, it, it brings up or raises the point like what is coming next? What will be wiped up next? Yeah, well, I think it's a, a product of a lot. Like, we all fall into the trap of getting excited around the fast release cycles and getting annoyed when something mm. doesn't come out for like nine, ten months. And that mm -hmm. is just something that happens to us all that we're like, <clears throat> oh my God, the next, the next thing. And it's like it's one of the things that I'm actually trying to resist this year is like I'm so, trying that's why I wasn't like massive on top of the Adepticon reveals because I'm actively trying not to get mm. involved myself in that this year because it is very easy to fall into. But to keep up with that release cycle, the older stuff and it's gonna be newer and newer stuff is gonna get pushed out, isn't it? So that they've got the space to be able to keep yeah. releasing stuff further on. Well, if a friend messages me every so often, like, oh, should I do this? Should I, should I collect this? Should I collect that? Like, oh, I'm really enthusiastic about this. And he mentioned something about AOS, like, my God, they really know how to push their product. Hmm. And I like, it, it, I mean, AOS is, isn't something I'm particularly interested in anyway as a game system. The models I really like, uh, especially when you can convert them into old world. And he was talking about picking up like an AOS uh, army in the next edition why like you you've never expressed an interest in this before it's only because the hype machine is is building up that you want to make these purchases mm. and i think it's a common problem that, that that's why i don't particularly like talking about uh, purchases in the hobby section yeah. because displaying the latest product that you bought isn't hobby it's consumerism you you need to almost like disconnect yourself from the constant cycling of stuff that they shoving in your face and they buy this, buy this, the new bit, buy, 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 buy. You need to disconnect yourself from. And I, I, I say this in full knowledge that I am a hypocrite, and that I do not always follow these rules. But yeah. if you really want something, try and buy it a year after release, because a year after release, 
tempers would have cooled. And if you really would want, if this enthusiasm is there and it's been sustained, then then by all means go ahead and purchase it. But don't buy just off off the the enthusiasm train that's being produced. I think one and of the problems they... with that sort of argument is a lot of the game. If you want to have a competitive army from a gaming mm. perspective, it's a lot of armies have a, a window where they are going mm. to be really good before they mm. either get nerfed or something else is out. Mm -hmm. So you almost can't do that with how they structure some of the games. Like mm -hmm. 40k certainly falls into it, Sigma. And it, oh, this mm -hmm. isn't to say that these are the only ways to play the games. But no, no, no. I, I, I fully got, think like the I got a counterpoint to that. Yeah. So if you if you push that a little bit, so um, yeah, I fully agree. Like yeah, shelf life has a window where things are effective. But you can't really collect an army in that time anyway. You can't but, I mean, this old world project is going to take at least a year to get like a pretty decent army together just to begin playing. In that time, uh, I'm f I fully expect the old world will still be uh, where it is now. But with those cycles in 30k, 40k, you're seeing like every six months ago, uh, six mm. months or so, this churn over. I mean, we were joking before the show that uh, I started a Black Legion collection at the outset of when they were generating hype for 10th at last yeah. year's Nexcon. And uh, like I've missed all of ninth, I haven't played a game of ninth. I'll probably miss all of tenth uh, to play eleventh because the cycles are so quick. So and what what is your intention in collecting and painting an army? Because I think it's a fool's errand to collect for tournament play because things change so rapidly now. What you think is good, I mean, well, that's that that's based on you as a painter, obviously, mm -hmm. like you valuing the painting side of it, whereas. Yeah. A lot of people, like, I don't know whether listening to this, but a lot of people have the perfectly valid, like, sort of yeah. thought that they're in it for a game. And even if they want their mm -hmm. their models to look good while they're gaming, mm -hmm. they're gaming pieces. And yeah, absolutely. You, it, it you then have to intention. keep up with, with the, and, I, and I'm sort of all over the place within this argument because I'm sort of saying about the churn as well. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to no, sort I mean, of put in put in that that perspective. Yeah, we work it. I mean, we're working we're working stuff not, out. Yeah, it's a conversation. Take keep up. Yeah, it's, it's a conversation we're having. We mm -hmm. yeah, we're working stuff out. Um, for me, it's it it's always comes down to intention. I I've wanted to collect something as a reflection of the universe. I I've never been particularly bothered whether it's effective in game or not. It's always yeah. nice to have things that work in game at the very least. Hmm. But I, I recognize very early on, like it takes me around a year, two years to produce an army, even quite a small army. And in that time, a lot of things can change. So I'm not trying to chase a meta. Instead, I'm trying to chase that idea I have in my head and translate it. And then if it happens to work out, great. If it doesn't, I still have an amazing army. So that's that's what my process. But yeah. I fully realize if you want to use them as a gaming piece, um, I would still urge to paint your miniatures, just find a more effective, quicker way to paint your miniatures to get them over the line. Uh, intention, all comes down to intention and what exactly you want out of your time, your spare time, your hobby, and your what do you, what do you want out of your life? <laughs> yeah, well, he's, I, I think we're what on a want? similar page with it, Miles, to be honest, because as people will see from what I've actually painted for my hobby hammer, but shall we, shall we go on to the other things that are getting yes. discontinued? And we'll just give a... Because we've obviously had most of the, the discussion point around what is and isn't yep. getting discontinued there. But So we've got Skaven. And some of these models have been out for 20 years, like the Rattling Gun, the Warp Fire Thrower. Yeah. The Rat Swarms. Like, there's, there's a bunch that has been around for a long time. But I remember that Warp Lock Engineer and Giselle's coming out. And it's they've been around a long, long time. The, the gutter runners, like we're talking, like two thirds of what has been, or is getting discontinued mm. for the Skaven. Now, oh god, yeah, I remember when the rattling gun came out as well. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's that was sort of like peak Warhammer for me. Yeah, now War grinder. The rumors for the next Sigma release is that it will include Skaven. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's Skaven's what that's what I've heard from an outside 
just like peripheral perspective. So it, no, it's in the preview. It, it was oh, it's been the in the preview. preview. Yeah, yeah, it's it's in the yeah. <laughs> I I remember correctly. So Skaven hopefully being supported, like to this capacity, but we'll obviously have to wait and see just how much of that, because a lot of this crosses over with the old world. So yeah, if so you were playing the old world this... and Skaven, yeah, I'm guessing all it. this stuff is just going to be, yeah, I think uh, this is just going to be translated into the old world. Uh, say, same with the orcs, maybe, because uh, it all seems to fit into the old world anyway. So, I mean, it's just a neat translation of boss. Yeah, and that's uh, the, the bone splitters, which is less of yeah. a discontinued range. Like But there's some really nice models there, like the, the Prophet and the Big Boss. Um, yeah, classic. Are actually really, yeah, the, like, the Prophet. really nice models. Yeah. Uh Slaves of Darkness, this is the big head scratcher. I'm assuming that they're cycling these out of the Slaves of Darkness book, but they're going to keep these miniatures in some form. Because I mean, before the show again, we were chatting about this. I'd hate to see these become the province of resellers and recasters alone. Mm. Well, the the Corvus Cabal Cypher Lords and Splintered Fang are really, really characterful. Like, well, awesome. all of them. All of these are, are really, them. really characterful. Iron models. Golems, Untamed Beasts, but... Ravagers, they're, they're all... Oh, yeah. I, I, I hope that they continue on in some manner or form. Yeah, because like, I'd hate to see these just com- the models discontinue. I don't care about the, the 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 gaming side of things because I guess you can always proxy them in for other things, but keep keep them for sale, keep them viable. Yeah. Now, beasts of chaos. We've got ah, a yes. lot of the range being discontinued. Yeah, oh, that's all. I mean, all, all of this stuff is in the. Um, old world right so I mean, and he's a core faction the, in the old world this is so this is the one that yeah say like warriors of chaos with the mm-hmm. like the slaves to darkness bit mm-hmm. they might do you know what they might just go right because there's no direct model that that translates to mm-hmm. the orcs i wouldn't be surprised to see in the old world the skaven mm-hmm. yeah. they're legends so who knows yeah, like because there are already legends in the old world, but beasts, <laughs> the main faction. Yeah, good point. Like, yeah. sure, surely they are going to like. There's no worry about the beast. You know, I, I think they're just going to be repackaged with square bases. I think that's why they're being you know axed from AOS. They they're just going to be put onto. Um, I mean, I can't imagine they sell very well either in AOS in comparison to the, some of the other. But like you say, main faction. I've got a couple of these allied into my own chaos force. Hmm. So yeah, whack them on square bases. Job done. Well, hopefully not even having to whack them if if what we're just predicting there. Hopefully they're just included with square bases. Whack. Whack square bases on them. Jobs good. Oh, some of the others as well. We've yeah. got the Saurus Eternity Watch, Sila, and Grim. Oh, that's... We've got the Branch Raid. Sure We've got the Branch, the branch Raid, which is uh, Drycher, yeah. which is actually a really nice model. Like I, I know I have a hatred of elves, but... Mm-hmm. The Valkyrie, the... really good miniature. Yeah, all these good miniatures. Yeah. Gigantic. Oh, the gigantic spider. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. All, awesome miniatures. So hopefully we'll just be seeing them move over to the um the superior game system in the old world. <laughs> well, yeah, because he's so out of that, the branch wraith has rules in uh the old world, which is like fully sub like it's a main army. Valkyrie the Bloody, who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. It's a special character with wings, which that can't be taken in any form mm. in the old world. Um, the Demon big boss Prince, on maybe, Gigantic um... Spider, Madcap Shaman. Yeah. Okay, big, right. Would be sent over. Snap, snap judgment, snap call. What is the best miniature this, in this discontinued range? Number one. The Just best in the miniature. others? J- j- no, j- in all of it. In all of these discontinued miniatures, um, Skaven, uh, the Slaves of Darkness, others, oh. best one. So let's S- have this argument. The one that I've been looking through, uh, or looking at as we've gone through, the Splintered Fang dude from the Ooh, Slaves to Darkness. that's a good one, but that's wrong. 
Sorry. <laughs> but that's wrong. Go on. Why and what? It's the beast, beast of chaos, beast lord. Ve- is very good. Is very good. It's a shame that it's an axe that's off, that's sort of cropped off that picture. Up in his hand. <laughs> you can't penalise it because of the picture. No, no. What I'm saying is it's not like the heart of an enemy that he's just ripped out of his opponent. Oh, that would have been way cooler. Like, damn, you're right. That would have been sky, way cooler. But it's not. It's an axe. Yeah. If it was that, that pose would be amazing. <laughs> but if we're just yeah. judging it on the model as it is, two axes, boring, man. Like, anyone oh, wants to convert it very easily. My argument's crumbling. So I, can't, I can't argue against that. You're right. <laughs> ah, damn it. Yeah. Um, because I've, I've, I've looked mention, at that model specifically for for some beasts. Yeah, that is that is a great bit, and it's a one of those miniatures like a lot of painters get and mm. like do painterly things with them because it, because the the composition's so nice. Honorable mention has to go to the cockatrice. No, it doesn't make it anywhere. You can't have to. Everyone ignore that. It doesn't make it anywhere near the top because it's in fine cast. <laughs> Well, if we're having honorable Pardon. mentions, I'm an idiot and like centigors. So I'm going to have that as well. Oh, cent- Hold on. Let me. Centigors, centigors, centigors. They're terrible models, but if, we, if we're throwing in stupid things. I oh, have- right. Okay. Let's let's move on. This has just devolved into a farce. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So the next section we've got, and I'm going to put Miles on blast first, we've got our hobby hammer contributions. Oh. Yes. So first we started on your Chaos Warrior, Miles. My little Chaos Warrior, yes. I've been waiting for Games Workshop to restock their bases. Uh, I got sick of waiting. I was very proud of this guy. Uh, he forms the basis of the Chaos Warrior tutorial that I did uh, on Patreon, where I go through how to paint this start to finish completely with a brush. I'll show you how to do like skins and non-metallic metal like very, very quickly. Uh, and this week we're going to build uh, with this little feather. So this is the next one. How to elevate it? How to elevate the paint job? Is that on, on but, camera? Yeah, like, just keep it up for a sec. There we go. There you go. This this is the the next evolution. So how to take infantry up a notch? But I'm very proud of this case warrior, and I was just sick of I was sick of waiting for the uh, base to come in line. But very happy to report, <laughs> I've bought stuff. I'm a consumer. Less than five minutes after saying you don't want to show yeah. purchasing power on yes. the cast. I bought I've bought bases, but I've bought it from a different company called um I'm gonna give these guys because very good bases uh white dragon miniatures. Um they they're in stock, which is phenomenal. Mm. Uh, and they come with pre-molded uh, uh magnets bases in, in the bottom of them yes. so you don't need to put any green stuff or do any like wibbly wobbly stuff and you don't have to worry about them matching against like it's all pre-molded they, you can buy magnets alongside them so you don't need to worry whether you're buying the wrong magnets or whether they fit or not have you got those bases uh, bought... for free on pain that you'll shout them out nope. on the cast right? not just, at all just no, to no, establish no, that no, Phil, I've, Phil has I've also bought, bought this some. I've bought this with my own money uh, this is not a paid endorsement I bought these off of, uh, so a, uh, a client sent me uh, his high elf army that I painted like eight years ago. He's like, can you rebase this for me? He's like, yeah, hell yeah, I can. Uh, and he bought these bases to go alongside his force. And I was so impressed by them. Uh, I've bought them for my own, own uh, collection. So I'll be basing my army this month and, uh, uh, well, actually producing finished miniatures off the back of it. So I'm very, very excited to actually get finished units yeah. up and take nice photos of them. Nice. I've been using good old MDF. MDF. But, yeah. yeah, well, they, they just fit nicely into trays and have this flush finish that gives like a... Hipster's a very... choice. <laughs> that, that says, well, it, Miles has been accusing me of being a hipster all morning because I'm wearing a cap and a shirt. Right, so you've painted this Chaos Warrior. You've also painted this Rogue Psyker. Oh, yes. Uh, so I said that through as a mistake. Um... <laughs> this is nothing to do with the challenge. I'm just immensely proud of it. Uh, it's the first miniature that I'll get completed for my Black Legion project. That you uh, started promising last year. A year, a year ago, yeah. But I've been ind- indecisive whether to go with non-metallic or true metallic. I've been boring the piss out of my clients, uh, out of my Discord members, because, like, should I do this? Should I do that? Like, I'm some kind of, like, um, 
lovesick teenager and I can't make a mind up between Corey or Troy. No. I should, I should, God, I should just do them both, you know? I wanted to point this out because this is actually one that I think should have made it onto my top ten. And I didn't <laughs> okay. think about it. But he's such a Oh, this miniature. Model. Yeah, not, yeah. not just of like of the sculpts that we did a few months ago or a few mm-hmm. weeks ago. This model is so characterful mm-hmm. that I regret not putting it onto my top ten. And I I I've seen paint jobs of it, but it hasn't quite captured like the chaotic essence of it. Uh, I love the piece of Necromunda artwork showing a chaos cultist uh, uh, leader, and he's kind of like floating in the air, and you can see his ribs uh, and his his let's find skin. It. Let's find oh, yeah, it. of course, yeah. Visual medium, visual medium. So we have the image up. Miles has just sent it through. Yeah, and actually, on reflecting of your model, I think you've done a good job of capturing it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the the. Detail on the model's chest means I I don't want to over cluster that area with detail, like to, to have his ribs, but I think I've captured the essence of it. And do you want to make this sculpt even better? I, I only realized this when I was painting it. It looks like the scream. I know it's a visual oh, yeah. medium, but everyone's, everyone's seen the scream, everyone's seen that picture. Google it. Okay, yeah, it kind of looks like the screen. But yeah, I agree. This is like this and the other psyche he came along with in the Siege of Rack series, just phenomenal, phenomenal pieces. Yeah. And then finally, you've actually done something this month. For, I have. Uh, for the challenge. The challenge. It's a week late, but I've given everyone a, a week off because uh, I've I've been lazy. I knew I wouldn't get much done this month because I was away at the depth con. I'm not going to get much stuff done this month because I'm in Australia teaching. I wanted to keep oh, things so ticking over. the interior over. motive of giving everyone this, the, extra time. Yeah, yeah, This the, because I'm not leading by example. So this this is my just ticking things over. This is from the one of the Warcry games. Oh, and I knew as soon as I yeah. yeah, I knew as soon as I saw it, this would be a perfect war gimp for my Chaos Warriors. <laughs> War gimp, my war gimp. Yeah. <laughs> so he stands in the back. He fills up the unit. Um, he's very desaturated, as opposed to the very bright, colourful unit that I have. So he stands in opposition to him. Uh, I was happy with the tattoo I was able to give him, which is simply mm. a transfer from the World Eaters range that I then glazed over the top of to help push it back into a more like a, a, a normal skin medium. All of this was hand painted. And it was uh, used majority of it uh, via the, uh, the new Atom paints that Big Child Creative and Mig Ammo are releasing. Uh, now, I have been given a set of those for free <laughs> to try out. So, yes, this that part is a pain in the Don't worry. All, you, all you've said is that you painted this with them. You've not, you've not sold your soul or <laughs> bent over to them yet. On that particular they day. are the best paints ever, <laughs> and you are rubbish as a miniature painter unless you try them. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I, I, I've tried them on this. That that was my month, uh, catching up on old work and producing a using this thing for my for my. Oh, I I haven't got on the pictures, but hold on, I'm going to piss you off again because I'm going to put this up on screen. Fucking hell! <laughs> Capture it. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Okay, I'm really happy with the back because I thought, what would this guy's loincloth be? It wouldn't be anything good. So I wanted to represent this as a like fallen banner from an enemy. And I, I've scrapped, like I've physically taken a knife and just scratched the hell out of it. And I've dry brushed quite a lot of like yellow and ochre tones as if it's like been soaked in urine over and over again. Oh, that's what you were thinking about. Yeah, yeah. For this, I was even thinking about rub it, rubbing some urine on it to give that extra dimension because we got sight, we'll have smell. And then we can have taste. You know, I actually think this looks better in this camera setting than it does in oh, the video good. that you sent before. Like, it's got that... Oh. Do you know when you were talking about different textures being yeah. what you're after, after a certain mm-hmm. level of miniature painting? Yeah. This view is showing that better than the video did? Very, very much so. Yeah, the longer I go into miniature painting, the more I realise it's about expressing 
uh, textures. I mean, I've even got like I, I'm not sure whether it comes across in the camera with the scars on his back. Mm. You can you can create these. I, I need to put blood on Welton, but you could create these super easy by taking different tones and then uh, with with a brush and adding them on, or just taking a knife, physically scoring yeah. into the paint job. No, I'm not sure. Is that's that painful? An actual recommendation, so I'm going to just point that out there. That is, that's an actual recommendation. That's an actual recommendation. That's an actual recommendation. Yeah, because look, look with producers. Yeah, fair. I mean, don't really grind into it and like knife the hell out of it. Yeah, but you could do it on things like your chaos characters to to give them a little bit of <laughs> extra texture and dimension. Should like be score across it with a knife. Right. Yeah. Knife in miniatures, pro tip. <laughs> Apparently so. Apparently so. Who knew? So I have been working on something different. So I I ended up making a board for playing full tilt on, which mm -hmm. got released, I think, a month ago now which is where you joust your Bretonian knights at each other. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was successful in that, though that wasn't my hobby challenge. Very successful, I'd say. It was also very, very easy. It was... I got the MDF base from the war office, bought it. Mm -hmm. Don't have to sh say that it was sponsored. Oh, by the way, yes. if anybody does want to sponsor the show, we're <laughs> remarkably cheap. We have no ethics. We have no backbone. <laughs> You don't even have to give us money. You just show us just basic civility and we'll turn over and, and show you our stomachs. That's exactly it. Um, we, we're like labradoodles. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I basically just got the MDF base, put some, do the PVA soaked in tissue uh -huh. or uh, wet wipes? Uh, yeah, classic. And use that yeah. for the, like, to just give it a bit more texture. Oh, um, well, I have seen some people do sorry to cut you off what no, i have no. some seen some people do um with the uh covid masks uh because i mean nobody has them anymore they're useless uh you could just cough in people's mouths now if you cut that open and take the uh, threading inside like yeah. the, the the tissue inside and then use that it's slightly more hard wearing than tissue paper and, but it's nice and thin enough so if you do have like an overabundance of those left over even dirty ones so oh, PVA. I've got I've got thousands of them. So because Emma's Taiwanese, her mum is still oh. sending them over because she's like, we need more masks. So she's sending like thousands of masks at a time, and being like, okay, yeah, cool. wear these masks all the time. Because in Taiwan, they like wear them in winter even just to like keep their face warm. Like never mind. Oh, right. I mean, it's, COVID. it's a good idea. Like if you get a cold, wear them to stop colds being spread. That's fundamentally a good okay uh, I, anyway, I feel like anyway. even that's an incendiary thing to say yes okay anyway. if, with you, okay if you hate the masks you can cut them up and make these cool little tents if you love them you can wear them and then do it yeah so i essentially just sprayed it white and then use contrast and then baste it there's not much to say on that one it's good it's great it's effective yeah. looks Me looks phenomenal and then but is well worth a like. So make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to us for Max's tent. <laughs> we can't do these repeated shout outs of branding. Uh, and then I painted my uh, Vitrix house cars or house cars. Oh, sorry, um, where are they from? Vitrix models. So they were. Oh, so we're not branding now, are we? Oh, okay. What do you mean? Well, you, you accused me of branding just then, and, they, and you, you shouted out Victrix over and over <laughs> That's again. That's where I got the models from. Are you, are you sponsored by Victrix? I'm not. I'm not. I, I'd love to be you sponsored be. by Victrix. These are amazing. These shields are amazing. Yeah. So they, we were just saying, they, from the back, these are little big man transfers that are mm -hmm. sold through Victrix. And they were the same ones that I used on my peasants mm -hmm. in the first round, but it's such a, a simple way of getting a lot of colour into the unit. I've got very muted tones from the front, and hopefully I'll mm -hmm. pick that up. Like I'm saving all the banners till the end of the force. Um, mm -hmm. but So hopefully that'll give more colour from the front of the unit, but the back, but, I'm really happy. Yeah. Even the colour that you have got in there is nice and muted, and the weathering you've applied on top of it 
grounds it with the rest of the miniature. It, it doesn't look like graffiti. It doesn't look like it stands out or apart from the miniature. It's it's a, a part of the mini. Yeah, you really, really good work with these shields. Yeah, so that, that's essentially been the enamel wash that I put on lots of things, but then I've started working. Mm -hmm. I've worked through that a couple of times with a, rather than like trying to get it all off in one go, mm -hmm. two or three passes at taking mm -hmm. off small amounts where I wanted it. And then... I've then been going back and re-highlighting in areas that I wanted more color in. Mm. So just to to bring out some vibrancy because these are my knights of the realm. Mm -hmm. So no, phenomenal job, yeah. phenomenal work. And yeah, really, really really like that. That. the silver doesn't it doesn't show much in photos, but like actually, when I'm mm -hmm. holding them, the silver looks grimy, but mm -hmm. is actually quite nice. What uh, what silver are you using for it? I, I Miles, I'm just using Games Workshop Iron Breaker because I just, oh, like okay. I've, I've thought about like, I've tried the like Vallejo metal colors really good mm -hmm. through an airbrush. It's what I do all my Iron Warriors is like yeah. love using them, but I've not found anything up to now. But like, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about trying um, the. The version so, um, of three metals or something like that. Yeah, a, a couple of recommendations I can give just for for uh, brush painting. So scale seventy five, always mm. a good range, good pigmentation, good range of metallics. Uh, I see, I've I'm not using, using, a... using them with a brush. Like so I've, I've oh, right, got okay. a massive amount of the range, so I've liked using them through an airbrush, but but just not not found through... them consistent. I found the very right. hairline when I'm diluting them. And maybe because um, I'm diluting them with water, but that's great. Be okay, in that case, next recommendation is Dark Star Metallics. Okay. Uh, and I think this this is all they do, it's just a metallic range. And they do come with a dedicated metallic thinner that you can use. Um, they take a little bit of, well, again, used to, because when you put them on at first, the metallic pigment just seems so big and so fat, it looks unrefined, but it kind of self levels out. Hmm. So those very big fat metallic pigments, they spread out and create a more coherent surface. And if you want like a big shiny uh, result, put them on top of a gloss surface first. Right, because okay. the gloss will cause more of a reflection. But if you want something more dulled and muted, like you're going for with these guys, put them on, but maybe put like a matte brown down as a base and then put them on top because that base layer will shine through slightly. In is the metallic that what, finish? Which one would you be using for, say, like your non metal or your true metallic metals when you're doing something like so, that that's going to require blending? It, it would be a combination of my scale 75 because I love necro gold. Mm. It's one of my favorites of like uh, uh, weathered, dirty gold. I love peridot alchemy, which has a slight hint of green to it. Uh, but then the majority of them would be dark star because of the range of colors you get with them. Uh, I, I'm leaning. It's, I, I've been sent as well as a review. Um, oh God, what the hell are they called? Uh, Turbo Dork. Uh, they've oh, come yeah, up yeah. with a new. I haven't had a go at these yet, so I can't really say uh, what they like. Um, but they come with like this new generation of. Uh, it, it needs a bit of a shaking up, but this this is like the new generation of gold gold paints. But I I, I can't speak to their efficacy. Uh, yet, but I, I've been using um, uh, Dark Star for about a year now on my own projects, my own true metallic projects. And I, I love them to bits. Oh, cool. I will give them a go because, say, like the the top of the standard, mm. the, the Fleur de Lis, yeah. is using scales, but I just don't find that, like, I've not personally enjoyed working oh. with them. Sure. Okay. It might be worth so looking at it. Uh, do you have Necro Gold and yeah. Peridot, my, my two. Okay, yeah. uh, give it like a very strong dry brush of Necro and then a very strong dry brush of uh, Peridot. And I'd recommend then using something like Coelia Green Shade or Oh, it's not, it's not even blue. the colour. It's I've just not enjoyed how the paint responds. Oh, to, right, okay. To like actual using, like thinning the paint, things like that. Got you. Got yeah. you. Try, try Dark Star and try their metallic thinner that goes with them then. Um, cool. Give, give them a will. Give them a will. Yeah. Um, shall we move on to some other people's 
project. Yes, absolutely. Let's see. So I'm not well, expecting lot, anyone to finish anything. A <laughs> lot, of, a lot of people in the same boat as me. It, this has been sort of like a, a you know, you start off with great enthusiasm in your first month, you tear through the second, life hits you in the third, which, which is okay. But we have got some really good good entries uh, for what we did get. Uh, what, what's the first one we the have? The first one is Esoteric Paths Blood Angels Thunder Hammer Standard. Um, okay. And this was posted on the Instagram with Credence, mm -hmm. Credence Clearwater Revival. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell because it's still in its infancy whether it's meant for us or not, but we're just going to claim it anyway. Uh, I, I love the red, like that really dark garnet red shows up really well against that bright shocking gold. And we have the, the base, which is mwah, chef's kiss, like all round good, classic heresy style miniature painting. Yeah, but, but the, the banner topper as well really caught my mm -hmm. eye with mm -hmm. those like transitions from the shadows to the, the light yeah. on the gold. Just looks excellent. <clears throat> So East Terror Path, if you did want to push this just ever so slightly, uh, when you have like that big gold, there's just a lot of, I don't know, like yellows and browns there. Try and mix uh, a little bit of like a green blue, like a turquoise. Uh, thin, it, thin it down with a little bit thinner, add maybe a little bit of gloss varnish and feed it into the shadows uh, to create like a little bit of verdigris effect in there. So that way you have the blue, you have the warm uh, uh, golds, uh, playing off against the 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 uh, coolness of the verdigris. Uh, it, on stuff that big, it's nice putting those little elements in to just give a little bit of variation if if you wanted to take it on. Uh, uh, but it's it's great the way it is. Yeah. Next, we've got Broad One One Five Sevens, um, Bone Warrior of Chaos. And this is from the Discord on Miles' Little Legend mm. Discord. So good, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think it's so, so good. I've seen a couple of people using this bony colour <clears throat> for Warriors of mm -hmm. Chaos, and I think it goes really, really well. Like, mm -hmm. it ties into a bunch of different complementary colours, or whether that's the right word or not, I don't mm -hmm. know. Don't know, don't care. Well, don't correct I mean, me, Miles. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it ties in nice to the colours around it. And he's got he's got mm -hmm. little details like scratches and the mm -hmm. blood on the axe that I'm really enjoying, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, black, white, it's a plain surface that you could then play stuff off against. So you have the turquoise uh, and then the red. Uh, the, the, ba the basing is really good as well. Just all around. Um, I think if you did want to add just a, a little extra dimension to it, a little bit of sponge chipping along the edges of the armor, I think would look great. It would help break up all the bone as well. Mm. And maybe paint the eyes a different color, maybe red uh, or like a, the, the, a fluorescent green, just something in there for your eye to be led towards the head a little bit more. Yeah, But again, I'm, sterling work. I'm going to carry on with our good cop, bad cop by saying it's perfect the way it is. <laughs> perfect the way it is, sure. <laughs> But only because of the good cop, bad cop relationship we've got going on at the moment. It's it's very good. It's very, very good. Next, we've got Knuckles 3920. I'm, I'm not going to read that from now on. And it's, That's his legal name as well. Yeah. Numbers and all. So we've got some goblin troll riders. Or trolls with goblins hanging about. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what company these are from, actually. It's a really fun model of a troll. And I do I like the skin colours that he's got going on between the trolls and the goblins. Yeah, and it's something that I have been looking at on the troll slayer that I painted. Was that the start of this month or was that the month before? It was the month troll. before. Or was it? It's month before. Yeah. Right. So the, the troll slayer that I painted was something that got me thinking about different coloured skin tones. And I think this has been done really well here. And the, with the contrast between the green and the blue. And then bits of orange mm -hmm. on there as well to make it just like pop mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he does say he's going to finish us off with gobbling green bases, which would make these perfect. <laughs> Do you know what? It's yeah, one of the uh, things that I've thought about a number of times going back to just doing uh, a goblin green base army. Yeah. And it'd, lo it, it'd look, we all know it'd look garish and horrible mm -hmm. rather than a nice black rim around the base. 
Mm -hmm. but there's something that just wants to pull me back into like the late 90s so it's late 90s is like scorpion green bases and Mm then 2000s is like goblin green yeah yeah and then late 2000s so cork basin (laughs) is it nostalgia oh yeah they might have cork those oh you mean on top of the base not like yeah 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 no not for the rim no it's sort of like a dark brown then with yeah all goddamn cork on top uh yeah i, I mean they, they they look fantastic look absolutely fantastic okay who's up next who's next up next we've got is it a, is it a witch elf from ah yes like canar like canar yeah yeah that, well, that's what i was pausing on was the uh pronunciation but it it looks excellent is this the same guy that's done done the two-handed axe yeah, executions, yeah, yeah. the classic unreleased executions. Yeah, he's just killing this project and he's really tugging at my heartstrings being a Dark Elf player who started at the, at this time. Like these were the very first scops I bought for my Dark Elf army. And he's doing such an amazing job of them. He's blending non-metallic and true metallic together very effectively. The skin tones, the modern paint job, the appreciation of values, volumes, texture, everything. Everything on this project is just stinging at the moment. And, and like an art, you are my hero. When I grow up, I want to be you. Yeah, and it's, it's really nice seeing these different, te- the, or like similar techniques used <laughs> on these different models. Mm-hmm. And it'd be really nice to see a follow up picture to this of when he's finished those blades because the, the axe that he'd done. Mm-hmm. On the, he's not an executioner, was it? The, whatever yeah, the it was an executioner. Oh, was that? A, a, but I thought you had an executioners don't have axes. What? Third, my friend, they had executioner axes, and it was changed to drikes uh, to to blades. They had axes, but right, I okay. think they were seen as too similar in style to the white lions of Trace. <laughs> so they changed so it yes. to the same as the swordmasters. So they say they change it to the same same as the sword masters, yes. But yes, they did originally have axes. Uh, I mean, when you remember Talaris, his classic artwork, I know it's a visual medium, but he has an axe above his head. Google it. He has <laughs> an axe. It. Ex- Google it. Executioners used to have axes, but they changed. Yeah, but it makes me excited for seeing what ends up happening with these. It's something that I, I need to educate myself more on true metallic metal because. That dark elf executioner, let us agree to call it, inspired me to actually want to do true metallics more than any other oh, good. that I've actually seen. So it's been it's been like churning in the back of my mind yeah. since then. Uh-huh. And next we've got a Skaven Screaming Bell by uh-huh. Chris Mech Aficionado. And I don't know whether he's he's an, an aficionado of Chris's mech or it's Chris the Mechanic and aficionado. Like he, he needs to get back to us on that one, I think. Yeah. Unclear, unclear name. He's. Are you an aficionado of Chris who plays Mech? Or yeah, an aficionado of Chris's, definitely. Go on. Why did you pick this screaming bell? I just think it looked cool. It was just that snap judgment. That looks awesome. I like the look of that. That looks freaking cool. Like the skin tones, the metallics he's used on there, the cool stone. I think it it all works together as far as a uh, as far as the colors go. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, and one of them things is the snap decisions of like mm-hmm. what looks the best mm-hmm. can sometimes just be worth trusting because it's what your eye what your eye just tells you is an entire piece or composition mm-hmm. or 